North America. Are you ready? Game three, Digital Chaos, Vichy J Storm. Vichy J Storm looking really good in game two. DC had their moments, some really nice initiations from, from MSS and Bulba uh, with good follow-up from the rest of the squad. But Vichy J Storm throughout the match, just better execution in the team fights. Uh, and they were able to make the draft work despite the lane, laning stage going rather disastrously. So a very good show of resilience and discipline from VGJ in Game 2. We'll see if DC mentally have re recollected themselves here uh, in this deciding Game 3. Yeah, I really felt like DC had the advantage in the early game, especially Earth with all the shenanigans that was happening in the bottom lane. I mean, they mm -hmm. it looked like they were pressuring Snaking like, off the planet, but... I mean, VCJ, they managed to work pretty well as a unit and uh, managed to make space for each other and really won a couple of key team fights that let them uh, be like more successful than I ever expected that game. Yeah, the, uh, the first fight that seemed to turn the game was uh, when Snaking got his BKB. Uh, they smoked down towards the mid lane and walking up the stairs, Bulba blinked on him. Uh, got or blinked on flea got immediately malefice they weren't unable despite initiating on the enigma to kill him off he babies black holes and the game got a lot harder from that point on. see they end up dropping that one but they'll reset here uh same bands lich veno for their side uh first pick for vici j storm they will opt to take the earth shaker last time just like moon did uh, and moon is going to go with the necro spirit breaker opening and I really like this opening for, from DC, and there's actually a little bit something special going on with, with this pick right now. I mean, they first picked the Necro. Uh, I mean, first of all, there's, there's a little bit of a change in gears in both teams. This time, Vichy Storm, they have the Earthshaker. Obviously, a very good pick because of his initiation and counter-initiation abilities. But DC, they actually have the Necrophos, and Vichy Storm, they banned out the AA. So one of the biggest counters for Necrophos is, is out of the game, not to mention the Venomancer, who is also quite good against Necrophos. So this Necrophos looking a little bit stronger than, than he normally would this game. Vichy Storm, however, they solidify their initiation abilities this game. And isn't this the exact same opening that DC had? It absolutely is. This so is we're going to take moment. your opening that you lost with and show you how to win. That is a statement oh. VCJ is making. I mean, Stan King God. This is very interesting indeed. Uh, you what? also have the snaking god on on the bat rider, I think. But what was your question? Well, I was gonna say, I mean, one way to deal with the necrophos uh, is to drag him uh, well out of the range of his team uh, and hit the back line, like they were able to. Uh, DC were able to do with the combination of MSS and Bulba uh, in the last game. So I, I like this opening, you know, despite there not being any hard counters like the the couple that you mentioned in the, in the Veno and the AA early on against the necro. Yeah, certainly. I mean, those counters are out. Fishy Storm, they kind of have to draft a few solutions to the Necro. It never seems... It, to me, it never seems enough to just have a lot of stuns for the Necrophos. Uh, because you always need a mix of... Whenever you play any lineup, you need a mix of, of, of stuns, of damage, of initiation. And so, Fishy Storm, they have their initiation so far, but... DC, they're actually banning a lot of the magic damage magic damage dealers out right now. They they start with a pug gun. Wouldn't be surprised if they continue to ban things that are good against Necrophos, just because Necrophos is such a such an important part of their lineup. I mean, it's one of two heroes so far, but generally when you have a Necrophos lineup, the Necrophos seems to do a lot of work for his team. So anything that helps your Necrophos do his job in team fights and in the game uh, will will increase your chances of winning. And they also ban out the anti mage. I mean, the Ritsu anti-mage is, in my opinion, one of the best anti-mages, at least in North America. And so they're pretty right in trying to in, in banning the anti-mage. I mean, that hero is quite good against Necrophos just because of the burst potential, Yeah. Uh, because of the anti-magic. Big, uh, also... big mana costs on the Necro spell as well, the uh, Reaper Scythe at least. I mean, anything... Basically, if you had an anti-mage on the VG Storm, right? and then the Batrider lasses the Necro, and then the anti-mage blinks in with the Manta, and the Necro's dead and like... A second and a half mm -hmm. and dc they have no chance to react to that so uh pretty good decision on them to, to ban out the pug and the, and the uh, anti-mage and i mean both teams are pretty uh flexible on what they can pick in the second phase 
really they haven't given out too much information about their drafts. I mean, Batrider, Earthshakers, and uh, Spirit Breaker, Necropost are all pretty standard openers. So, so they ban out the Weaver, perhaps a little bit scared of uh, hyper mobility lineup from DC with already the uh, Spirit Breaker showing and the potential for the Blink Dagger on the Necrophos. Also, just a good uh, 1v1 lane matchup against the Batrider, as we've seen time and time again. Yeah, they're, well, they're looking at that third pick right now for DC. And, you know, they, they actually they had, what, the first pick, which means they get to counter pick all the Vichy J Storm or Vichy Storm's. Uh, I should just call it Vichy Storm. It's much easier to pronounce. <laughs> but DC, they, they can they have all the counter picks, right? Because they had first pick. So they have the the very last pick, and they have a second. Or Silencer. Pick, so they pick a Silencer, which gives them a little bit more teamfight potential for DC. Also gives them a form of counter initiation from Vichy Storm. So, I mean, we've seen the Spirit Breaker Silencer a lot. It's quite a good uh, opening for a teamfight. You have the Spirit Breaker Charge In, followed up by the Silencer Global Silence. And then suddenly it's a lot harder for the enemy team to respond to uh, to your abilities. But Vichy Storm, they can also respond to the silencer by picking things that don't have to team fight or or heroes in general that are good against the global silence, heroes that can react to the global silence. So uh, I mean, not saying they should pick a, a, a bad end or anything, but just heroes in general that that pick or that pick up um, items like Yule Scepter, BKBs, and Lotus Orbs. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, early on, if the Spirit Breaker is able uh, to get up off the ground running, there is a lot of plus two to be had for this silencer. Dazzle going to be picked up by the Vichy J Storm side. It's a little bit of a peculiar pick from Vichy Storm, I think, just because Dazzle, to me, feels like a hero that doesn't do well against the silencer. Like Dazzle never gets to the point where he has anti-silence, and so... When you have a hero that relies on getting a, a shallow grave off every Legion fight. Commander. I think uh, it's going to be a lot more difficult with the global silence, right? And silencer uh, and D DC, they can always finish their kills in in quick time with Reaper Sight. Talked about uh, lasso counters, a soft one here in the press the attack for the Legion Commander. Also, just uh, another hero that tends to build blink, so you can jump in off the back of the Spirit Breaker charge and global. Certainly going to help in the endeavor that is the duel. So yeah, a Dazzle interesting pick. At the beginning, I thought of the possibility for uh, VGJ posturing up uh, to, to go aggressive, and that's because they, they banned the two heroes that are very good in the 1v1 matchup against Batrider in the, in the Lifestealer and Weaver. Um, and then I thought maybe with the follow-up Dazzle pick that that's what we're, they were thinking. Uh, do you think there's any merit to that? There is. I, I feel like Vichy Storm maybe had something in mind with the Dazzle pick, or maybe mm -hmm. they felt like it was their last option for position 5, just because they didn't want to pick their core there, uh, didn't want to give too much information by the third pick, but I don't know, it's a little peculiar to me. Dazzle is Dazzle is good in lane. E even right. if Dazzle like suffers in the mid game and in team fights, Dazzle is like undeniably a, a very great position 5 when it comes to to laning and to just general early game movement and which is something they pick up like and like not a hero that really cares about the global silence because if he gets his ultimate off before the global silence the silence really doesn't do anything to him he also picks up bkb which should give him a way to remove it but uh dc they also have dc have legion commander and i think legion commander as you mentioned or as we mentioned collectively uh is a save against the bat rider but she also lanes decently against bat rider mm -hmm. and i think that's part of the reason why dc picked her up so one thing I'm noticing for this Vichy J Storm lineup is, I mean, unless you build it on Lycan, which I haven't seen, there's no Diffusal Blade builders for this Necrophos. Um, so the Ghost Shroud seems pretty darn good in this game thus far. Lycan can pick up a Diffusal Blade. I imagine he will just because it's so important for, against the Necrophos. The other thing to mention about the Lycan pick, like Lycan appears once in a while, but I think he works really well this game because... DC don't have oh, come on. enough ways to catch him. You have the Spirit Breaker and the Legion, but realistically, if, if Lycan somehow avoids getting dueled by the Legion Commander, Spirit right. Breaker uh, disables aren't enough for DC's current heroes to deliver enough damage to kill the Lycan, especially if he's being armored up and healed by the Dazzle. And that makes Vichy Storm's uh, lineup much more tanky than DC's. 
Okay. Even tankier now, so. DC, it feels like DC's lineup has like a complete lack of damage, and maybe Stanking saw an opening for a Medusa pick, because Medusa's always good in these kind of games where the enemy team has trouble uh, trouble dealing with her and trouble dealing with a potential push or a potential team fight with a Medusa. And DC don't have a lot of options. I mean, the most natural counters to Medusa are like OD, which has really fallen out, I think, in the last patch, and Ant Damage is also banned, and I don't think a PL exactly works in this game either, but it is an option. I mean, there are definitely merits to the OD in this game. Uh, you don't have the greatest roaming duo in Dazzle Earthshaker against you. Uh, they're a natural counter to the Dusa. You can imprison someone who's graved or potentially lassoed, although that's, I guess, less likely. As you mentioned, it's not something that necessarily has been the radar of these things at all. But I think, yeah, if DC don't pick a hero that either like counters the Dusa or at least counters the the gameplay of Vichy Storm, like, try to trip them up early, then I think they're in a little bit of trouble. And I'm sure Moon Meander's going over all of the options with his team right now to figure out what the best pick is here. Phantom Lancer. It is the PL, and PL is okay against Medusa. I mean, the illusions get instantly killed by the, by the stone gates, Snake, but PL... Yeah. Yeah, and the snake, but Peel's Piel, mm -hmm. a hero that is more than capable of disengaging from, from the stone gaze, so we'll have to see how this dynamic works for DC, because it feels like DC is a very, um, like, like focus on their initiation and sort of, like, go from there, right? They have to use a global silence, and they have to use the duel, so, uh, ideally, when you play against a Medusa lineup, you're actually able to disengage quite easily, and DC, it feels like their lineup isn't able to, so if they get off to a good start, then the game becomes really easy for them, just because their initiation is so... Uh, it's, like, quite strong, but so is Vichy Storms, and uh, if this Medusa goes out of control, I think DC will have trouble with her. All right be interesting to see how this early game goes. Very stable laning combination in the Shaker Dazzle or VCJ Storm side, but there is the possibility that DC leave MSS 1v1 versus Snaking. Uh, we'll have to see how the early game goes. Is the game paused again? It must be. Why does it take so long? Not complaining. It doesn't look like it's paused. Just a little bit of a delay there, so we're in the game now. Dude, Mason's got the the avatar of uh, way too sexy. I like it. <laughs> I did not see that. Okay. So funny, funny photo wearing the Dignitas hoodie. Dignitas being, uh, of course, one of the teams that Snaking played on. So big throwback there. Shout out to Dignitas, my favorite uh, team at TI3. Rest in peace. Sorry. Oh no, this is all warranted. Zane Dota. We've got Grand Grant on the Necrophos. Starting with a young Null Talisman and three branches. I wonder. It's a little odd not starting with the region, but maybe that's just a testament to how broken the. Uh, yeah, it's the a Necrophos thing, is. I'm sure. I mean, why even waste your gold on, on region when you have what is. One, three, five, seven health regen, mana regen for kill, and then you press W, and then whoa! Suddenly my hero's back to full health and full mana, so. Aha, uh -huh, Osfrog, Necrophos hero. Uh -huh. Aha! But... <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Patch, please. Ice well, Frog. Lycan, Lycan's a little weird hero in, in the safe lane. Like, he doesn't. He need, he, Lycan as a hero relies on his teammates in order to hit the offlaner. Because he doesn't have any mobility, he doesn't have any stuns, lockdown, CC, none of that, right? I mean, you could count the slow on his pulse, but realistically in lane, he has to, like, walk up to enemies to punch them. And so, uh, w what makes up for that is is just Feral Impulse's raw amount of HP regen, right? He himself can't get knocked out of the lane, and he can't really knock anyone out of the lane himself, so... I imagine MSS will get quite a bit out of this lane, the Legion Commander, especially since the other main support for Vichy Storm is the Dazzle, and I don't think Dazzle exactly does a good job of uh, summoning Legion Commander either. 
it looks like both teams trying to get a beat on what the lanes are. Uh, deeper wards than we're accustomed to seeing here in the early game. Radiant get one on the cliff behind the tier one. Um, one near the, the bounty rune slash mid lane uh, for the dire side. But they get this one a little bit more typical uh, up on the spire near the radiant off lane tier one. So you know what I just realized? Didn't the Suvichi storm opened with the bat or shaker and then DC responded with a legion commander. So it's like a sort of a reversal, right? Mm hmm. So Stanking's basically just gonna show DC that this is how it's done. This is this is the game. This is the counter draft. The difference is, is the the trump card of the global silence. However, on the side of DC here. We... Minor details here. Minor details. <laughs> Stanking's like, hey Moon, this is this is how it's done, right? This is how the Earthshaker Barret is done. And uh, speaking of those two heroes, they're gonna start top oh, together. I reckon Earthshaker's in a position to block this creep wave, which should give. Give uh, snaking a little bit of a lane advantage going into the first wave. So look, Abed taking towards like... the safe lane actually for DC this game. Mason the one to play the necro in the mid. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if they're just more comfortable on these heroes. I mean, Mason yeah. is the, the necro player. The player that usually plays necro, and mm -hmm. he's more than capable of a mid player. I mean, after you play many many hours of pubs, you just also yeah. explains the uh, not going for regen. He's been pooled the tangos. Spoiler. It all makes sense now. I was wrong. <laughs> Rons was left. Curse goes out top lane. Uh, it's just for now going to be the Moon Meander Abed combo. There's a there's a little bit of kill potential top. Peel's a little bit of a difficult kill for Batrider, but certainly Moon Man Moon Meander has to be careful on the Silencer not to get caught up by Fisher and Firefly. Otherwise, he is Gonzo. So. Bot lane charge goes in. Uh, Bulba already took a hell of a lot of damage, though, from the poison touch. Uh, so can't continue to pursue forward. And as you mentioned, Lycan, innately very tanky. And not much for Sanking to do. I mean, he pulls a lane. I think realistically they try to get as many levels on both of these heroes. And then maybe attempt to get a level advantage just so that they can out-trade the uh, Spirit Breaker and the Legion Commander. Speaking of which... Francis on the Earthshaker, rotating in. Difficult for me to think of how they kill one kill one of these uh, these offlane heroes, though. Mm -hmm. So, agreed. A, l a lack of disables in pretty much all the lanes in this early game. Just the Fisher and the Charge, really. Gold for me. I mean, the only way a kill happens is if uh, someone takes way too much damage and decides to stay in the lane. But yes. I think the, here, the, t the lane with the most kill potential is the PL and the silence around right. this Batrider, so... Thinking's got to be a little bit careful, right? And Batrider's actually a pretty strong yeah. hero at, at catching up just because he can farm jungle stacks at low levels. Well, bottom lane, they're going to wrap around on MSS. He gets to press the attack off, but may just end up dropping here. Overwhelming odds, though, will give him the move speed. And he'll salve up. And away he goes. Courier? Thought about it, I guess. Maybe you got to go a... for the courier kill on MSS. It's <laughs> got a random no, glimpse no, no. of it. So, so w w what you do is you, you spam right-click on the courier, right? And you hope the Earthshaker is also spamming right-click on you. Then your passive procs, you get the second hit. And then that's a dead courier, right? We're learning yeah, things. 20... 25% chance of that happening if you actually manage to walk up to the courier, which didn't happen, but we're back to neutral. Mm -hmm. Score is still 0-0. Zero to zero. Nothing really happening at the moment. I feel like Vici Storm are okay in this bottom lane. They managed to pull uh, pull this wave, which will give MSS a little bit of a hard mm -hmm. time. Charge top it. lane. Uh, it's coming from base, however, from Bulba, so making should be just fine, but he does have support inbound with his Dazzle and Earthshaker and now Abed that he's purged the uh, napalm gets a little bit confident but in time he will back away and he is able to dodge the Fisher as well but no doppelganger for the next little while however the charge gonna come through Bulba gonna save the day they're gonna turn in onto snaking a couple of right clicks are there the shadow wave not enough to save him Abed trying to limp away will be right clicked down by the dazzle moon meander though nearby needs that plus two does he get it he will and we'll get the plus two Bulba gonna pursue flee further Needs a bash here. The tower bash. shot. Orb of Venom tick? 
Not enough. Well, mobile didn't press the bash button. I'm disappointed, but... Uh, overall, I think DC... Well, I mean, Vici are happy because they killed the... Oh, wait, there's a charge? Francis? Guest on the oh, Fisher. That was a little bit early, sir. And, he, had, uh, he had vision. There was a, there's a ward here. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, there's a, there's a radio. That was a little <laughs> slightly questionable. I mean, <laughs> the angle was off. The timing was off. <laughs> And there's a dead spear breaker. Maybe he just uh, had his screen elsewhere and wasn't aware of the positioning of his hero. Not sure, but weird. DC, they're happy with that, that exchange, right? Free mm -hmm. trip to the fountain for a, for a bed. I mean, they traded evenly, so it's not like a bed really lost anything out of that exchange. And instead, Moon Meander gets plus four int for that infinite scaling. So it's getting uh, closer to the uh, support. Silencer transitioning into a carry <laughs> for the 80 minute. Bottom mark. lane looking to wrap on MSS is stanking. Has a double damage rune, baiting him at the shrine. Here comes the dazzle. Now the Fisher coming through, blocking him off. Well, yeah, oh. he actually blocks him off completely from the shrine. MSS ticks down. <laughs> Nicely set up gank there by VG. Stan God coming in with a double damage though. That's the and kill. That puts the score at 3-3, and uh, net worth EXP pretty much close to zero. No team really uh, too far ahead of the other. The charge up on bottom. So. He's been doing very well for someone who's not a mid laner in general, CS-wise. So seeing as how like none of the lanes are, are winning particularly hard, right? You mm -hmm. wouldn't say any of these lanes are like super ahead of the other, so mm -hmm. I think Oh, last word goes out top lane, and here's the kill potential you were talking about. Well, Abed doesn't have the Spirit Lance just yet. Threw it out at the beginning of that engagement, so the TP in from Sand King will keep Snake King alive. I believe this is the first game this series where both teams are like even at about the six minute mark, and mm -hmm. so I think this is the first time we'll see uh, really the decider of the early or the decider of uh, who's ahead in the mid game by the the big movement coming from either team. I mean. You have Lycan ult, which is pretty big at... Mm, bottom lane. They know the Dazzle's TP'd out. This is their opportunity to kill off Ritsu. They'll jump forward. Snaking, actually, the one to TP in on the back right. Are going to pay it forward and return the favor. Uh, but Bulba, he is going to be dropped down here. Big overwhelming odds comes through from MSS, but he can't continue forward. Uh, so, Stan King TP's up top to save Snaking. Snaking TP's down bottom to save Ritsu. And 4-3 uh, to three is your score seven minutes in. DC, they, they did that classic DC movement, right? They have the siege creep bottom. They tried to make a macro move on this Lycan. Unfortunately, they didn't really have enough disable. I mean, MSS isn't quite level 6, so there wasn't really any way to kill that Lycan. Uh, but again, like, whichever team manages to take the first tier 1, I think we'll have the advantage going into the mid game. It's not level really 2 clear. Howl as well on Ritsu here. No, no points in the Wolves just yet, so uh, he's rather tanky. When he needs, to. it feels like Vici Storm want to make something happen, right? There's no other reason why Snake King's running around level six, not really working towards his blank. All right, shapeshift as you mention it, and the Fisher is available over to the west. Bulba gonna try and charge through. Fisher though will catch him. He's on the opposite side, however, and can't be right clicked by Ritsu just yet. Now Ritsu gets in range, and will be able to swipe him down. He'll burn to the fire. As you mentioned, snaking. Making the move bottom, they will net a Bulba kill. Not the biggest kill, but a kill nonetheless. Keeping the Spirit Breaker yeah. down in this early game. The, these mid laners are just being statues at the moment. They haven't really budged yeah. from their lane. Oh, yes. I mean, these are two of the most unkillable heroes in the game. Necropost and Medusa. So it would be hard for either team to gank. But it looks like, actually, someone on DC has drawn an arrow to the bot lane. Thinking about making a rotation to this Lycan. I mean, the Lycan's shape shift is down for 70 seconds. Bulba coming in with a smoke. Moon Meander also standing in position. So I think the plan here for DC is to shove out this lane quickly with the Necropost and then go for a smoke play. Moon Meander shows himself mid lane. He's going to drop the curse on the Medusa. I think Bulba's getting a little bit anxious to use that smoke. Last word as well. And everyone takes actually a big chunk of damage here. Uh, from the Dusa, Mason right, particularly my prediction, low. My prediction right here, okay, so Bulba charges, followed up by the duel, and then Abed's gonna TP and he's got a TP scroll ready, and then this is the, this is the DC rotation 
classic coming in. MSS has a level 2 overwhelming odds at this point. And playing very safe right now is Ritu underneath the tower. Flea in the... Well, Flea's going to catch a glimpse of Bulba and that'll be that. Nice prediction, Franz. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I'm just going to say trolling, that dude. Ritsu just... and Francis outplayed them, right? Ritsu saw that coming. <laughs> it is the classic DC rotation, so... Yeah, they did I mean, see... Uh, they definitely communicated from the mid lane that the Necrophos There's no left. reason for the Necrophos to to be missing when right. he's been sitting in the lane and, like, you know, sounds just something funny. Man, like, Necrophos isn't... Necrophos isn't a hero that wants to be jungling this early in the game, so there's mm -hmm. only one thing that Mason could be doing walking to the bot lane so you could say that dc were a little bit too obvious or a little bit too slow with that rotation so ritsu and francis totally catch it out and actually there's a bit of a rotation happening bottom from vici storm themselves Coin. Look like anything will happen out of it hey king level seven does have the lasso uh, no drums no blink so kind of hard for him to get in on these fights without the earth shaker yeah, that then. bulb is doing the bounty rune relay too bad it's taken but uh, Stan King manages to hit level 6 on Dazzle, which is actually huge because, uh, you know, our armor's very important. If you control the armor, you control the game. And so... Is Stan that King, a... He hits level 6. Bulba, it is a meme. So Bul Bulba's not even <laughs> level 6 yet, and Moon's close to level 6 and uh, not quite there, but... Stan is getting uh, the better of these ex of the EXP exchanges. You curious about that meme? Yeah, it's it an NA Dota thing. Okay. You might have heard it before. I, it sounded familiar, and that's why I began to ask. But anyway, yeah. Bottom lane, uh, their attempt on the rotation thwarted as I suppose MSS couldn't close the distance quickly enough, though. MSS is cutting the wave, does have the siege creep with him bottom, and right now, uh, Flea not able to do anything just yet. Does show, will drop down the Fisher. MSS will dodge it. And top lane, we may have a little bit of a scuffle ensue. There is some dire vision. And there's Radiant Vision as well on this exact cliff. Like, not exactly a lot of action happening in the last five minutes. And I think part of that is that the cores on both teams are basically unkillable. Like, Phantom Monster, like and Necrophos, Medusa. None of these heroes are easy to kill. And relatively speaking, the initiation from both teams is a little bit uh, not good. At least until Blinks come online, so... Both teams playing pretty passively, trying to get as much out of the map as possible, and I think DC will actually get more, but down in the bottom lane. Yeah, they're going to Fisher block off MSS. Echo Slam is there, Lasso as well, and he'll be dragged into the tower and down. Just brought up the uh, current gold tab to look at who's closest to this Blink Dagger. MSS now going to be set back down to 1,000 gold and 1,850 on Snake King after that pickup. 1,900 even. Bounty rune circuit. Here we go. Got it. Easy. Almost level uh, nine as well. After on the one map. firefly, actually, there's a couple of stacked camps here, so Snakey might decide to stick around, although it's a little bit dangerous there. Next firefly should net him his blink, so he'll have it in a minute or two. The DC do get that tier one bottom, which is nice for them because it opens up the map. But it seems like Vici Storm have no intention of ever putting their lichen back there in the near future. They have the like and then the Dazzle up top. Pause comes up from Grant Grant, aka Mason. So, as you mentioned previously, uh, this is perhaps the least sizable advantage we've seen come out of the early game, but definitely an advantage for VGJ right now, it feels. It just feels like that because uh, Snake King is closer to his blink, mm -hmm. and I think feels like they have, yeah, they do have about 1k advantage in EXP, and EXP is one of the most important things in the early game, especially when you have it on heroes like Dazzle, who scale incredibly well with levels, and Bulbas yeah. says go, Stanking says one minute. That Hopefully time, it's... Uh, sorry to interrupt, that time that Snake King TP'd down bottom lane, uh, Stan King was able to find a, almost a full two minutes, so uh, definitely a couple of waves top lane, it's worth of experience. Uh, and it was only Abed top, so he couldn't have killed them off all by his lonesome. I think probably Vici Storm will make the next big move. Saying he's going to get healed up. He picked up his blink, working on the four staff next MS. That's about 1k from his blink. Uh, Medusa's close to Lincoln's, which should help her against 
pretty much all of DC's initiation is actually broken by Lincoln's and and mid lane tower actually going down to no contest here. Seven four seven just parked in the mid lane all game long. I think this is uh, this is Vici Storm's chance to put a dent in Abbott's farm. Mm -hmm. Link Lasso at the ready, making a move towards bottom lane. Dire Sentry, how or Dire Observer, excuse me. However, scouting Flea and should see snaking shortly as well. He does not have a smoke on his person. Moon Meander does have the global available. Um, Nether Strike still a little bit of a ways away for Bulbot. Both of J supports level seven at this point in the game. I mean, part of the reason why Stanking has the uh, level advantage is because his team was able to make space so he could stay top and get uh, get EXP under that top tower. How do your hot How do your hotkeys mess <laughs> up in the middle of a game? <laughs> Didn't use that spell till now. Just realized it. Yeah, yeah, maybe he rebounds something. Who knows? All right. Shape shift. Top, top lane. Nice. Moon meander in a little bit him. of trouble. He is gonna go for the TP out, and <laughs> Ritsu right. just gonna say forget about it. Run. As TP in comes, they do have a charge available, but Ritsu will oh. be just. Oh no! He's Reaper scythed up, and with the overwhelming odds, Mason is the one to pick up the kill. How was that? Only slightly questionable. I mean, DC also did a really good job of reacting. They, they pretty much TP'd immediately, right? Mm -hmm. As soon as they saw the like and LT, they're like, hey, we can actually deal with this. Bulba, I, Bulba, I believe, TP's in into a charge, and Mason was already in position for the Reaper site, so. Yes, the one long range stun uh, that they need in that top lane for Vici J Storm was farming in the bot lane on the Earth that Shaker. Also does mean that Shapeshift is down for about 70 seconds, so Vici will have to probably defend this. Pretty passively. They do have the blink lasso though, and I'm unsure uh, if DC have seen that item pick up yet. All right, Francis, spider senses. Nether strike just attained here, and forward is Mason with the right click. Snake King looking for something after that movement for DC in the uh, dire jungle, but. His rotation does not bear fruit for the time being. That's a good pick up, but uh, pick off by Mason and Bulba. And it also sets Francis back about 200 gold. Francis is actually surprisingly close to his blink. He's about yeah. 300 gold away. He probably would have had it if he cleared one more wave and didn't die there. But unfortunately for him, he gets picked off there. MSS rather close as well now at the 1900 gold mark. He's going to make his move towards mid lane where Ritsu resides, and Charge is going to come through from the south. Snaking, though, jumps the back lines, and going to look for the lasso. He finds it, but the duel is there from MSS, keeping him in place. Global now comes out from Moon Meander. Seems to be one that just sounds the retreat, however, for the uh, Dire Squad. MSS, though, poison touched up. Spirit Lance will come out from the low ground, and the Presti attack will keep MSS safe. Oh, Meanwhile, though, Reaper of... Scythe near the shrine, and Mason... Only attends the fight when need be. Nice prediction from him there. And working Snaking on the early radiance. I mean, what seemed like a huge team fight ended up with everyone just running away and got all excited for nothing. Rip snaking, honestly. <laughs> he's dead for. Since he's picked up his blink dagger, uh, a couple of unfortunate sequences of events for the Vici J side. Shapeshift used top lane to no avail. The mid lane fight ends up going slightly against them. Uh, maybe, you know, the biggest takeaway is that Mason, his first two Reaper sites have net him kills, and he's well on his way to the relic. They're going to start moving bottom. And uh, DC have the shrine so that they can get back up from the other two. Oh, heroes. they just saw Flea as well underneath the ward now. And Coin. he is Much a killable kill. target, yep. Mason gonna roll through, has a phase shift. Fire blink! Uh, four staff, excuse me. Echo Slam is there for Flea if he wants to use it. There's a Stone Gaze somewhere nearby, but no. 747 oh, will. Blink, though, so he has that at least. And actually, there's gonna be a counter initiation with Vichy Storm. Charge away. Down to Snake King. 
still surviving here is Mason. Now jump forward with the freshly picked up blink from MSS. Can they kill off Snaking though? It doesn't seem that's the case. Stan King will get off the grave and they get the lasso up onto MSS. Kill him off. And Flea's death does not go. Well, unpunished, I would have said. But they end up getting the Batrider on the back line. And now they'll burn away all the mana of the Medusa. Abed with the fresh pickup of the Diffusal Blade. Nearby is Mason as well. And the Lycan for Ritsu is also going to be dropped. First Diffusal Blade charge. A lot of kills on the tail end of that fight for DC. Uh, as they bring down the Earthshaker in the initial engagement and three heroes thereafter. They do end up losing MSS uh, as well as Bulba, but still DC very content with the end result. I mean, what seemed like a good fight for Vichy ended up taking a little too long. So as I mentioned earlier, DC, they had the Shrine and the Tier 1 there, and the uh, Phantom Monster was able to TP in and, and clean up. And yeah, no Earthshaker present for that, and no Shapeshift for most of it. Uh, and that they did lack certainly a lot of damage. So both teams probably looking to reset right now. I mean, DC have all of their ultimates up, so they can make a move here. Whereas, Fuji, they still have 30 seconds left on that shape shift. Talking about shape shift, that actually Lycan's uh, only level 10 and feels quite behind at this stage in the game. Actually, all the other cores on DC are like level 14 and 15, so. He's definitely going to want to work on the experience department, and I think part of that is because he got picked off in the last two fights, or he yep. wasn't really, he wasn't there when there were big kills, right? And so a big part of your EXP is, is from uh, getting hero kills. Yeah, his rotation up top was unsuccessful. He got pressured quite a bit by the combination of Bulba MSS, and even though MSS died in lane once or twice, uh, they did have him under under tower uh, quite a bit on the lichen so it was a rough early going uh, they spent a little bit more focus i suppose keeping snake king alive in the top lane and so the two ended up a little bit behind has the necro one well on his way to the necro two at this point but boots a travel diffusal already up here for abed on the pl and mason has the relic and almost a full radiance here I mean, that Radiance will help him push out waves, it'll help him farm, and it'll increase his damage output in fights a lot. Well, that'll be a pretty important pickup from, from Mason. MSS, Invisibility since. Rune. Abed on the high ground, throws down a Spirit Lance. I feel like they have the fallout damage. Scan is going to catch Bulba. The Radiant Scan, that is, as he rotates over. I haven't really talked about it much, but it feels like Vici actually can't clear these illusions very effectively. I mean... You have Echo Slam, but that's like a one-time thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, PL, if, if the fights go a really long time, PL has an advantage just because he's going to be burning so much mana, he's going to be able to throw a lot of lances, and Vici, even if they catch him with Batrider, I don't think they can finish him off. Bot lane, Almost trying to TP so. out, and petrified is MSS. So, 747 will make it away. Stone Gaze used, though. It'll be down for the next minute or so a little bit longer abed mid lane does throw out a charge on snaking but perhaps the uh the siege creep here caught vision of St uh, stan king behind him and backs abed away it doesn't feel like as easy for vici storm to kill abed if his team is around with him especially because of that global silence Uh, both teams starting to get a lot of farm. I mean, it's about 3k net worth ahead for DC, but I don't think that's substantial enough to warrant saying that things are necessarily in DC's favor because if each get one or two good team fights, I mean, they'll be in a really strong position, especially with a uh, hero like Medusa that scales incredibly well. It does have the Lincolns as Rioya. Regeneration! It feels like DC's ready to make a big move here. They're starting to group up. Or maybe they're anticipating a move from from Vici Storm. Yeah, coin. Global at the ready, they've got this fresh radiance yet to be deployed in a team fight. Stan King gets down a ward, may give him a a little bit of a false positive here in the top lane, and this is the target they want. Jump forward from MSS, gets the overwhelming odds and the duel. They'll even expend the global for this. And they will save the Reaper's Scythe on Necro, so they can continue to press forward. The support inbound from VCJ Storm 
just a little bit too late. In the meantime, Abed just farming away bottom lane, playing a little bit tentatively at this point, though, as the rest of the Radiant lineup was missing. Yeah, it just felt like Grits, who was really out of position there. I mean, I don't think he sh If he was trying to bait himself, maybe he should have realized that, you know, Global Silence prevents any attempt for counter initiation from his team. And really, uh, really it just felt like maybe he was just overstaying his welcome with that last uh, creep wave. So you see they managed to get a pretty good pick off. They get some dual damage. They do expend the Global Silence, however. So if Vichy decide to, to make a move, uh, DC won't have Global Silence for the next uh, 70 seconds. And Global's actually been spamming charge on Medusa just to cancel the Lincolns. I don't know if it's to, if it's to spook her out, but I've de definitely been noticing that. Avicii making kind of a cool play here. They have Medusa continuing to hammer at the, the tower bottom while the four heroes uh, on his team are making a smoke play, so... We'll see if DC figure out what's going on here. Or DC are grouped as game. five, though, so this could be disaster for VGJ. Bulba, though, he's a little bit out of position if Snaking wants to catch him. Jump forward, Flea's gonna catch the Echo Slam on the four. Fisher is there as well. Shadow Wave comes through. Everyone from DC low, and Snaking getting low. He's gonna, but he's gonna kill off the Necrophos first. Now the Stone Gaze coming through from uh, 747. Bulba in trouble. Snaking still surviving here with the uh, Shallow Grave. He's ticking down, though, and will end up dropping. Bulba now blocked off by Flea. And it is an ultra kill for the Lycan. Abed and MSS. Yes. Lone survivors for their side. Actually, MSS bought back on the Legion. What a... Okay, well, for first of all, I think DC were over overconfident being in that pit. I think they wanted to sort of sneak the Roshan there, especially after you see... Uh... The Medusa bottom. I mean, you see the Medusa bottom, so they probably assumed that hey, maybe the enemy team was was sitting bottom behind the Medusa the whole time, right? And I guess uh, as a result, they wanted to get in like maybe an extra couple hits grouped up in the Roche pit, and Francis ends up with the four man Echo Slam. I mean, what dollar value would you assign that Echo Slam? Hmm. Well, I mean, this is a qualifier. I <laughs> I mean, it, it it was easily, like the $6 million Echo Slam was a nice Echo Slam, but that game was kind of over. You can assign a dollar value to that, right? I mean, I suppose that the net value of that Echo Slam isn't determined until, uh, or isn't really determined unless Vichy win this, right? And they, right. And they end up uh, qualifying, so we'll have to see. But for now, back to the game. It was damn DC nice. Has to expend buybacks, so... I actually swings a net worth about 2k or about 5k back in uh, Vichy Storm's favor. <laughs> Both teams just doing a little bit of, a little bit of dewarding. I mean, DC figured out that there was that ward on their shrine, so what comes out actually? DC have all of their spells. The one sort of silver lining for uh, DC side is that Abed did not die uh, in that absolutely traumatic event. So he is still you know, the beast that he's been for the last 10 minutes, but hasn't really been able to showcase his or flex his muscle here. He does have the boots of travel, and his team is making a move without him. So kind of a similar move to what uh, VGJ just did. Jump forward from MSS. He's going to find the duel. They get the global off as well. Can they kill the Dazzle in time? The Reaper Scythe is there. They'll take him out. Is the TP in from Abed? It is. He doppelgangers forward, trying to jump into this fight. Stone Gaze, excuse me, is already there, though. And in the duration of it, they've killed off three. So Abed, a little bit too late to the fray. And he'll be a, he'll have to back out as Mason being aggressed on. He's going to get lassoed up. Enchant Totem is there. Fisher. Nicely placed by Flea to ensure that the PL can't re-engage. And Vichy J take a great fight in the mid lane. That stone gaze perfect from 747. And he gets damage off on pretty much every target it looked like with his split shot. That was a really good counter initiation from uh, Vichy Storm. But more peculiar to me is that DC ended up using two of their ultimates on Dazzle. The uh, Reaper Scythe and the Lage Commander duel, which seemed a little excessive to me. Yeah, I mean, cool. I feel like in order for DC to win these team fights, they have to burst down uh, more realistically oh, the Lycan. But what one of the one of the two cores on on Vichy Storm? It just and as a result, it just really didn't have the damage without Al Abed, and uh, I suppose 
you can't blame Mason for using the, the Reaper Scythe there. The dual duration was about to end. They wouldn't have killed the Dazzle. He would have graved himself. It would have been perhaps even worse for them. He gets the weave off. But yeah, as you mentioned, they used two of their huge abilities. And, and you could even argue that Global was committed just for the Dazzle kill. Uh, and then it was almost easy for VGJ to counter-initiate. So, uh, you know, they, they go for that move and... Perhaps they, they, they see someone and get a little antsy. I can get the Dazzle. I'm going to jump in and duel here. MSS does. But, you know, Abed it wasn't notified yet to start to TP in. But that's kind of weird, right? Because, I mean, if you're DC, you might think, hey, Dazzle really doesn't have a way to global silence. So, frankly, if instead of dueling the, the mm -hmm. Leech, or in, if instead of committing so much to the Dazzle, they... You know, they duel and Reaper Scythe the like, and then they're taking a much bigger target out, right? And then the fight looks much better because instead, Ritsu and 747 were able to just dish out all of their spells and all of their damage that fight and really uh, turned what looked like a uh, pretty surprising initiation from DC. Instead, they lose a team fight. Medusa picks up an Aegis. I mean, this hero was pretty much unkillable for, for DC to begin with, especially with his group. Uh, with his team grouped up behind him, so now you know Medusa's this unkillable tank on the map. Beachy Storm, they can try to make moves with it, maybe take out all of the outer towers or attempt a uh, a high ground. DC, they're stuck just uh, farming, pushing out their lanes, making sure they don't get picked off, maybe looking for pickoffs of their own, but really it's Beachy Storm that have the advantage right now, and they're ahead about 4k net worth on a lineup that arguably does better. Uh, in terms of core matchups. Mm -hmm. They've got uh, ultimately the Earthshaker and the Medusa against the PL, whereas Abed is, you know, the vast majority at this point of DC's damage. At least they, their initial damage. Uh, I mean, uh, Mason can certainly contribute some, but not from the get-go as Abed can. Yep. And uh, Vichy probably just looking to reset. They have both teams have all of their spells right now, so I think Vichy is just looking for an opening in, uh, on the map to make a big move. Coin for me. They're, they're not in a hurry to make anything happen right now. Double damage. So taking a look at uh, item progression. So Medusa's working on that Mjolnir. She's about halfway. Well, not halfway, but about 2k, 2 point something gold, k gold away. Lycan's starting to work on that defusal, which should help him against the Necropost. He does have that Ogre Club, so he'll be working on a BKB at some point, but maybe he figures it's uh, less important than the defusal at the moment. And uh, Stinking's got the Blink, Force Staff, BKB coming up online, so that does mean he has a way to remove Silence, so he can still pull off his initiation even. Uh, even if global gets used, and, and it actually works for his team, right? Because Medusa and Lycan, they can still do a lot of damage outside of or during the global, and so I think that gives Vichy a little bit of an, a little bit of an advantage, or less of a disadvantage during the global silence. Lumi and they're going for a ghost scepter of his own as well. So once this defusal blade is picked up um, by the Lycans, two targets he can utilize it against. Nemesis actually has Blink Blade Mel, which I think allows him to kill realistically any hero other than the, uh, the Medusa. Oh my goodness, look at this card he go. He pressed the attack on the Seed Tree Bandit. Pretty much solo took out this tower. MSS going to jump in for the last hit. Man, have you ever seen the Alacrity Siege Crypt? Oh boy. But, uh, I have, I indeed like have. Three to four hundred damage per hit. Abed, Good stuff. being pursued out. Oh, he'll make it down where his ward vision lies. Yeah, I've been working on BKB, which is kind of weird on PL, but kind of warranted considering that he has to deal with uh, Mystic, Snake, Mystic Snake, Echo Slam, and, uh, and Firefly, so that should help him out a little in the team fights. I mean. We'll get a, a slight bit of damage done on this tier 3 bottom lane. I'm going to press the attack on the cart too and force back the Glyph and the Lycan. No one to counter or cancel TPs, though in the mid lane, no one really in position for DC. Permanent damage, though. Yeah. I think yes. the Aegis will probably run out. Yeah, it's, it just ran out, so Vichy 
really only got two tier twos out of that Aegis, which isn't bad, but I don't think they really want to jump the gun because if they if they do high ground and and the fight does get really prolonged, uh, that's those are the kind of fights that like Urfosa and Phantom Monster really excel in. Bulbas, Bulbas starting to work on a BKB of his own. He's been quite oh. poor this game actually, but not behind Stanking on the Dazzle. Nobody is ever behind Stanking on any hero. It feels. So uh, <laughs> at the moment, if, if you're DC, you're just trying to get as much as possible because I think they want the Phantom Monster and the Necrophos to be a lot more farmed, right? So Medusa's uh, farm is starting to plateau in a way, just because uh, DC's difficulty of killing Medusa doesn't really get higher from here unless she starts picking up uh, like a Scotty or Butterfly which she has next but at the same time the Phantom Lancer isn't really in a position to to fight into Vici Storm so DC's trying to get as much out of the map as possible uh, stalling time. Speaking of which they will get a tier 2 top lane and in response Vici J posturing around this tier 2 on the dire side in the off lane. I'll get this with ease. It's a little strange because I think I, it now feels again like a repeat of last game where both teams are just being super passive. They're both respecting sort of the team fight potential from both teams, and it's not really easy for either team to make a move right now. Certainly, it's much easier for Vici Storm because they just have to park the Medusa uh, as a frontliner. But if uh, if Vici are slightly out of position. DC have more than enough first damage to, to pick heroes off, especially with Reaper's Scythe. Do you feel that this benefits any one squad? I think my major concern for DC is that there are just going to be more counters for the global to come out uh, into the game, and that kind of takes away from their team fight potency. Yeah, it certainly does. I mean, I think Stan's working on a there's max, so he'll have Guardian Greaves eventually, and actually there's already a Lotus. Yeah, exactly. I, I didn't even notice that before mentioning point but yeah Francis Lee he's got the uh, Lotus Orb up Snake King's got his BKB so that's two heroes at least uh, that don't care about this global so it's hard to say I mean I haven't really seen matchups like this before but I imagine Phantom Lancer and Necro can still manage to kill the Lycan and the Medusa it just takes like a really prolonged fight where uh, Phantom Lancer gets a lot of illusions up the stone gates comes down and you end up burning a lot of mana from the Medusa I mean I think that's part of the reason why they pick Phantom Monster is just to have a hero, an illusion hero that buys Diffusal to help deal with mm -hmm. uh, with the Medusa. Mm -hmm. There's a smoke coming up from VG Storm. Yeah, Lycan Wolves are scouting. Uh, one is on Abed, the other on MSS. So decent vision for GJ Storm side. They'll TP one into the shrine as well, and that will be. Could be huge. Medusa. DC are positioned pretty well though. Jump forward. Echo Slime, it's only going to connect onto one, but it is a big target in Moon Meander. Still, he's surviving though. He gets the global off after the lasso. Moon getting low. BKB popped by Snaking. Everyone from DC a little bit low here. Under the cover of Ghost Shroud though. Mason looks for the Reaper Scythe and he won't quite find it on the Lycan who gets graved up. Still standing tall is the Medusa, but Abed has sat on him and will take him out. Ends up being a two for two when all is said and done. But DC have the stronger heroes surviving. Like and able to TP out in the tree line. Overall, they get the big raid boss down in the Medusa for DC. So just well positioned there. The Echo Slam was inches off hitting two heroes. But only connected onto Moon. And for that reason, MSS able to counter with the press the attack there. I think that was a really timely sentry ward plant from, uh, from DC. They spotted out the wolf which allowed them to know, hey, we're under the vision of, of Vici. So I think they did a pretty quick delta split. They took pretty good positions, and only really the silencer got clipped yeah. by the Echo, because I think ideally Vici Storm, they initiate on one of these cores, either the Necro and the or the uh, Phantom Monster, and burst them down. Instead, uh, the fight lasted a little longer than Vici would have wanted to, with the Necrophos and the Phantom Monster being alive. So, you know, PL again excels in situations where he's where the fights are drawn out where he gets to have a lot of time to hit this medusa and really there wasn't any help uh from vg storm for this medusa and uh, dc win a team fight and now they start hitting roche they do have a medallion on moon uh solar crest in fact 
So that'll help them in this endeavor. MSS, only 28 dual damage, 38 minutes into this game. Uh, and Abed on the PL, not the best Roche taking hero, but still with the Solar Crest and the sustain from Mason, uh, they will end up taking it out. He's also got a Shiva's Guard completed up after that last fight. Cheese onto the Necro, and Aegis on Abed, as you would expect. Uh, Abed's starting to work on a butterfly, which should make him a lot we more time I mean, Medusa and Lycan, they don't have MKBs and they're actually nowhere near it. And so these illusions should be quite difficult to kill because he already has the 15% evasion talent. Uh, it doesn't stack additively, but it still ends up being a lot of evasion. And so since uh, most of Medusa, pretty yeah, much all of Medusa treasures. and Lycan's damage is physical, I think Abed should have an easier time in these fights. The only thing he really has to be careful of is making sure he doesn't get caught by the Echo Slam without his BKB up or being caught in a Stone Gaze. Top lane, VTJ. Convening as a group, but no the movement to be made. Really pick up a gem. <laughs> These wolves are doing so much scouting. Butterfly does come out now for 747. And they do have the BKB on the Lycan as well. I'm not sure if he had that last fight. It is 10 seconds, and I don't believe he did. So now he has a way to deal with the global. Movement from DC. Yeah, they're starting to move up. Hobbit yeah. TP's mid, so maybe they're going to try to force Beachy Storm back here. Oh, the Necrobox could be down as well. Uh, 30 seconds left on those units and they're making their way bottom so that is a decent amount of the damage coming out of the lichen nice denial from Rioya. and yeah not the ideal target to open on is that medusa but he gets the tower deny dc probably want to back off here get a bit to uh, push out the top lane and then travels in later. <laughs> or maybe you just take a fight right now. It seems like he's kind of conflicted on where to move, but decides to head towards top. And really, with the Aegis, what they want is they want to get all the lanes pushed out and then be in a position to slowly siege the high ground in such a way where they can't really die twice on Avid. Yeah. Snaking feeling pretty safe to hang out in this vicinity because they have this cliff ward. So just going to farm in that kind of area, constantly push the wave out. Uh, as Abed leaves. There's a charge somewhere. On bottom. bottom lane. EKB is up for Ritsu. He's just hanging around on the high ground though. Could be in a lot of trouble. The global comes out. They f jump forward with the duel. Echo Slam though connects onto two. And there's the Medusa. They're baiting in the Ritsu like head. Meanwhile on the back lines. Mason starting to do some work. They get the stone gaze off. Abed forced to turn away. And they take down the Necrophos. Now Abed in trouble as well. He's going to be defusal bladed up. Turns to go into the Medusa. And takes a huge shadow wave. His Aegis is going to drop, and his second life in jeopardy. Pops up the BKB. Phantom rushes towards the Earthshaker. Flea could be in trouble, but he's just going to try and use this to get out. Flutters away, and has the boots of travel, snaking, pressing forward. Up on the high ground is Moon Meander. He's just going to try and get the curse off and back away. Has a four staff of his own. Abed, fissured up. Has the doppelganger to the high ground. Doesn't make it. Oh, the fortune there. He gets four stopped up the hill. Moon Meander going for the TP out. Now a jump forward from Snake King. Snake King should have a flame break. No, he has no mana for it. And doppelganging away is Abed when all is said and done. However, DC do take a bit of a crushing loss in that bottom lane fight. Ritsu just standing there baiting. Uh, and the initiation from 747, their counter initiation, was great. I mean, they got the blade mail duel on Lycan, and eventually the Lycan would have died, but sitting at 3k HP with, like, 9, well, nine armor is not a lot, but sitting at 3k HP, he was way too tanky of a target, and Coin as a result, they bought enough time for Vichy Storm to really go for that counter initiation. So first of all, there's no BKB on the Legion Commander, so the, uh, the Echo Slam from Earthshaker just nullified all of the damage coming out from... Sister from Spirit Breaker and Legion Commander. More. But the other thing is the two cores on DC weren't exactly... Yes. Uh, ready for that duel. Yeah. I think the Necrophos was still a little bit away and Abbott had mm -hmm. to TP in, so the damage wasn't quite there to finish off the like and Avicii end up with an astounding team fight. Yeah, I think you make a great point. I was just gonna 
flag. That's kind of deja vu from the mid lane. I mean, MSS finds the target that they want or a, a really good target to start off the fight, but the core is just not nearby, and they don't have enough damage to finish him off in the duel, and it actually is 14 damage going the way of the Lycan for Ritsu. So it does feel like... It feels like this is a hard Phantom Monster game just because uh, successful Phantom Monster games... Uh, usually you have you have an advantage from the early game because this hero likes to fight so much you're not in a position where there's like two heroes that are extremely difficult to kill for you on the enemy team Lycan's not really an easy kill neither is the medusa i mean the medusa dies eventually but it takes quite a bit of time especially with that butterfly up on her serious attack speed on these medusa illusions and they're not easy to kill either working on top lane Okay, you got the infinite scaling on DC, you have the Legion Commander, you have the Silencer sitting on 12 int. No, nothing to be ignored, so... Good to see, uh... <laughs> 28 victory, dual, uh, dual victory damage is not the, the necessarily... Carry you know, the Lycan has 14 dual damage, I know, so yeah. I just that's like good, that. That's gonna be game winning, right? Well, he does crit. In ultimate form. Haste! Double damage! This I don't know if anything's gonna happen off of this. I mean, Vichy Storm, they can sort of slow siege as long as they start protecting their heroes as they're doing it, because realistically this Medusa doesn't, doesn't die in a hurry. Looks like the DC will start backing off into their base. I mean, Vichy Storm's been missing off of their base, but off of the map for a while. There is a bit of a lack of catch as well, especially with the Lincolns up. It's really just the duel and the Spirit Breaker, so they can kind of sit her on high ground, feel fairly safe doing so with the Dazzle it's behind. Not just a catch. It's like a combination of lack of catch and just lack of ways of killing uh, important targets. Mm -hmm. Obviously, heroes like the Silencer and Dazzle will die instantly, but Microphos and PL, they're like. They're, they're tough, uh, tough customers. I mean. Mason's sitting on Sh Shiva's Radiance, BKB, Hurricane Pike, so not exactly an easy target to kill. Near that level, uh, level 25 mark as well for Mason, so just, you know, regardless of which talent he picks, he's going to get ever the more difficult to kill off. Well, DC is stuck on their base again, just like last game, but... This time it feels like uh, they actually have the solutions for, for Vichy Storm's heroes. Yeah, at this point the, the Medusa pick is doing wonders for, for Vichy Storm. She actually she actually has a rapier queued up, so be interesting if she picks that up. I mean that should give her the damage to pretty much clear out all of the yellow illusions. Snaking has a gem, so just scraping along for defensive wards on the Radiant side, or on the Dire side. Still though, no tier 3 down for either side in this one. Roshan still not to spawn here for another minute and 18. But VGJ, they've got the, the run of the map at this point. Smoke coming out from Lee. TC. Could be in trouble here. He's charged up. And he's going to get hit. Another strike is there. The duel. And they'll find some victory damage for MSS. 18 well, into his pocket. Continues. <laughs> I think it only begins at this point. Third duel win of the game. Three for four. Is MSS. Endurance you have the plus 18. Also, also the ends for... Uh... Yes, plus two. That's, that's key. Now jump forward. Lasso is going to find Bulba. They get the global off, though, so no follow-up just yet. Bulba now going to get the charge off onto the Batrider. Has to back away. Pops his BKB. And meanwhile, on the backline, 747 getting into the entire lineup of DC with the right clicks. MSS is going to fall. They pop the Lincolns. But again, Abed nowhere to be found in this fight. And now Mason forced to pop the cheese. He has a Hurricane Pike in just a second. Abed back up to the high ground. All the ultimates used. Now he needs to get in and do some damage. Still, Medusa very tanky. Hurricane Pikes up, He's do, as you mentioned, dealing with the illusions with ease. Is this 
747 Dusa. Moon Meander re enters the fray and it'll probably be to his death. Ghost Shroud comes up for Mason. He has one death pulse, but that'll be all she wrote for this Necrophos as he'll be dropped down. Flame Break to come through. Heartstop Roar and the Radiance do kill off the Snake King Bat Rider. But overall, Vici Storm once again somehow 747 able to flutter and find his way right into the back of the DC lineup. If Abbott wasn't there at the start of the fight, mm -hmm. they get an initiation on Bulba and DC is sort of just trickle into the fight one by one and Vichy Storm, they manage to take a good fight and Griffin respawns just in time for them to take it. How convenient. Vichy J very happy with that engagement. DC uh, hanging around the pit though with a few heroes but they do not have Before their necrophos. Jump forward, Moon Meander. He's going to uh, go Scepter, but against the Diffusal Blade, not going to save you much. Jump forward, though. Boba's in, and the duel's going to come out onto the Medusa. They won't end up killing her off, but they do bring Flea very low. Abed in under the cover of BKB, looking for the Earthshaker. Will kill him off. MSS will be the next to fall. Abed still standing strong, though. The Ages of the Mortal picked up by Ritsu. The Dire do get the kill, though, and Ritsu is down. They've also killed off the Medusa somehow. Can they get the bash on Sand King? They cannot. BKB up from Ritsu. His TP not available right away though and Abed finally we see the damage of the PL committed to the fight and that is a godlike streak for Abed he picks up off of Ritsu immediately in towards the mid lane he goes it costs a couple of buybacks for the dire side actually didn't cost them a single but uh, it cost them the necrophos buyback from Mason there are two buybacks available for Vici's J side, and it feels like they at least need the Medusa. Now jump forward from Snaking, he gets the lasso off, it's on to Abed. There's the global though, can it save him for now? He has the Flutter and the Doppelganger, he's been stunned up though, somehow, some way. And now Bulba, gonna be the second casualty on the back lines. So teams exchanging buybacks here. Those good buyouts from uh, VG Storm. They managed to get the kill on Abbott because he got uh, he got frozen by the Stone Gaze. So quite unfortunate there for him. He'll go down, and he still has buyouts. So you see, he should be able to at least try to defend this uh, this final or this tier three. Uh, if DC actually do manage to kill these two cores on VG Storm, that does mean that the Deuce and the Lycan don't have buyouts. So. Maybe uh, DC try to bait PG Storm into a bad fight here. Smoke from the back lines was pinged out, it seems. Weave is going to be popped onto 747. He is going to get to tier 3 and start to work on the melee racks. Lift going to be popped. Jump forward from Snake King. He's going to find the lasso onto the Mason. Necrophos. He gets a BKB off but doesn't survive. That's a dieback for the Necrophos. Now DC have to fight here. Jumping forward with the bot back Abed. He's under the cover of BKB but he is the only one standing and fighting toe to toe with this Medusa. Now a jump forward. Echo connects onto 2 from Francis Lee. And Moon Meander in trouble here. With the Solar Crest it's actually keeping him up a decent amount but he'll burn down and one last hit from the static charge of 747 will kill him off three heroes dead no buybacks looks like the beginning of the end for dc as vichy j storm through the base jump forward shiva's guard is going to be there abed making it away mss blinking out as well gonna throw some illusions at the enemy but feels like uh, it's just a little bit too little with only these two heroes up they will have a bulba spirit breaker in 15 seconds but that is two lanes of racks down. Third one going to be taken shortly, it seems. Jump forward. Lasso is going to find, well, an illusion. Abed makes it back with MSS. And now they have the Spirit Breaker. They need to probably make a move here. Jump forward from Abed. He's going to BKB up. Spirit Breaker is going to come through with the charge. With the Stone Gaze is there. Abed forced to turn away with the residual duration of his BKB. And now he comes back and gets petrified on the tail end. Jump forward from MSS. He's going to duel. And this is going to be the beginning of the end. The end of the end. Maybe as DC are all dead here. Abed the last one standing. And he is not long for this world. As Snake King finds the kill and the GGs are called. It felt like in that last team fight there with the PL buyback. I think DC's plan there was to bait the Necrophos and then have the Legion Commander uh, remove the last so, so that Mason was freed up to, to cast the spells. But instead, thinking uh, four steps away, the Necro gets pulled too far back and then gets bursted immediately. And off of that Vichy Storm, 
managed to take uh, take game three. So Stan King showing everyone how the uh, how the Earthshaker Batrider is done. <laughs> <laughs> the BM let me open with the same two picks that you did last game uh, and beat you with them. But either way, uh, yeah, we always talk about kind of that press the attack being, you know, theoretically or on paper accounted to the lasso in practice much harder uh, to actually execute. Rough game for MSS, those couple of initiations uh, where Abed was not nearby enough to actually contribute damage. He ends up 0 10 and 13 on the Legion Commander. Uh, overall, uh, from the last two games, Vici, J, Storm really looked just coordinated as a five-man unit. No one really standing out um, all that much. All of them making good plays, though. A really nice counter initiation bottom on Fleas. Earthshaker uh, when Witsu stood there baiting them out. And Vici, J, outlast Digital Chaos in this best of three. So, guys, that'll be the end of the semifinal round for this ESL1 Hamburg North America qualifier. Uh, and the matchup you will have in your grand finals tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, Eastern Daylight Time, is going to be Vici Storm versus Evil Geniuses. So Vici J have their work cut out for them, Franz. Uh, but as you mentioned before, this NA region, it's ever the more close and competitive each day we watch it. So until then, guys, thank you from us uh, and from ESL and Join Dota. We'll be back tomorrow at 1 p.m. Uh, for the conclusion of these qualifiers and the winner will move on to the first major of this new season uh, to join the direct invites uh, which are team liquid and newbie and the china qualifier winner which was keen gaming so uh, report back tomorrow guys we'll see you around 1 p.m eastern time for evil geniuses versus vtj thanks for watching Thank you.